All right, so we are now at 1602. I am going to start my timer, which means I should start giving you actual content. Um, hi. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, since you probably read the description for this session, you already know I am VM Brasur. You also already know that we're going to be talking about open source governance. How exciting is that? But before we get to governance, there's one quick piece of housekeeping I would like to do, and that is to please save all questions and other things until the end. Ideally, only questions. I do not deal with comments. So save them until the end. Um, I will try to have as much time as possible at the end, however, because every project is different. Everyone has different constraints, different community members. And so what I give you here, it's going to kind of be a higher level thing. I want us to have some time to talk about specific problems that people are having and questions that have come up throughout the course of your open source existence. So hold on to them until the end. Um, that said, we are going to start with one question that is fundamental, and that is, what is governance? You probably have some concept of this already. Um, you wouldn't be in this room if you didn't at least have some idea what governance was. But to make sure we're all on the same page, I will define them. Um, I'm going to start with three fairly formal definitions. And just FYI, for the upcoming slides and a few more in this presentation, I will be reading them for the visually impaired. So, First formal definition comes from the Governance Institute, who might know a thing or two about governance. Their formal definition is that governance encompasses the system by which an organization is controlled and operates, and the mechanisms by which it and its people are held to account. Ethics, risk management, compliance, and administration are all elements of governance. Okay, like I said, we're starting with the formal stuff. Next is slightly less formal. We're going to bring it down a notch, and that's from Wikipedia, everybody's favorite online encyclopedia. And they have this to say, that governance is the process of making and enforcing decisions within an organization or society. It encompasses decision-making, rule-setting, and enforcement mechanisms to guide the functioning of an organization or society. I think they need an editor. They use organization or society, ended it twice two sentences in a row, but aside from that, slightly less formal. Taking it down yet another notch, everybody's favorite internet dictionary is Merriam-Webster. The act or process of governing or overseeing the control and direction of something. All right, like I said, these are all kind of formal. Um, and I think Therefore, it makes it difficult for people to wrap their minds around it as with respect to open source. So here's how I prefer to define governance. Governance is human infrastructure. It's infrastructure for human. It's those bits that allow humans to function and interoperate smoothly. It is the how and the where, why we do things here. And I'm going to come back to that how and why pretty often during this presentation because they're super important. That's all governance is, the codification of the how and why we do things here. It is a broad definition, and that's intentional because infrastructure required for any organization, any free and open source software project, it's going to be different. Again, depending upon the constraints, depending upon the individuals. Here we're going to see, a, uh, or we do see, a high level list of some things you might uh, consider as a human infrastructure. Going to read this. Um, conflict management decision making. Pretty important stuff, wouldn't you say? Codes of ethics and conduct. Fundamental. Contribution procedures, project roadmaps, something a lot of people don't normally think of as governance, but it does help to guide people along the correct path, so therefore it is governance related. Intellectual property policies, not listed here, but you'll hear it a lot um, in this particular thing, thank you, XZ, is security policies. How are you handling all of those? These are all things for which we should set up expectations, and those expectations are governance, the how and why we do things here. Because free and open source software is by, it is for, and it is made out of people, not code. 
The code is incredibly important, don't get me wrong. We need the software or else we can't get stuff done. But if you don't have the people to use and build that software, why? So that's what open source is. Open source is really people. And these people collaborate a heck of a lot better if they have a shared understanding, a shared language of the rules of engagement for the community they are in. We need that shared understanding, as well as the expectations that come along with that shared understanding. This means that, free, that governance is a critical part of free and open source software. We always think of the source, be it code or CAD or creative work or whatever, right? We think of that first and foremost. Um, documentation, if we're lucky, they'll have good documentation or any at all. Technical infrastructure, it's technical, we love it. So therefore we think about that, but we don't think about the human infrastructure, but it is one of those critical pieces. So it's something we have to consider. It gives us that shared understanding. Without that, we have no community, no collaboration, and nothing that makes free and open source software the special thing it is. Now, despite how critical it is, there are still a number of problems that happen, uh, wow, disturbingly often. I've been in free and open source software for a very long time now, um, I think 35 or so years, I don't know. After a certain point, you stop counting. A long time, right? Um, and these are things that I continually see throughout my, my uh, open source endeavors. First problem is just not thinking about governance at all. Kind of already touched upon this one. It just never really bubbles to the top of that stack to get popped off for FOSS maintainers. Um, over the past several decades of free and open source software, we have unfortunately created, fostered, and maintained a culture that prioritizes code over pretty much anything else. Secondarily, and largely because it's good fun to argue about, is we focus on licensing. And again, we brought that on ourselves by making licensing really important in the early conversations around free and open source software. So therefore, it has carried through, and we have not done anything to change that perception that licensing is somehow more important than the human parts of free and open source software, the, the human infrastructure. So therefore, that human infrastructure rarely bubbles to the top of the stack for a lot of maintainers. That's our fault. It's not theirs. But if it does bubble to the top of the stack of their mind and they think, governance, pff, I don't need that. People are going to show up and it's really obvious how things work. Or insidiously, I don't need governance. I had to do things the hard way and so should they. We get that a lot. Um, unfortunately, that bootstrapping, they should suffer because I suffered and you want somebody to suffer? Is that healthy? Get a therapist sort of attitude. Um, you know, that's really all too common. Um, it's an anti-pattern that we allow to happen in free and open source software. So let's consider that they have actually considered this and they discarded it as something they don't want to do. The problem is it's absolutely needed, it's necessary, because people are going to show up and they're going to want to do things. And if you don't tell them how to do things, they still want to do things, and so they're going to make up their own rules. And you ain't going to like it. They're going to follow their own path, rather than the one that you expect they should be using. Rather than the how and the why in your head, they're going to use the how and the why in their head, and if those don't match, mm, you're going to have conflict. And it's a shame you don't have conflict management methods because you don't have governance. So if you don't provide guidance to people, they will do their own. Um, but there is a secret for these people who think they actively do not need governance. And that's sorry, honey, you have governance already. You just don't do anything about it. You don't admit that you have a how and a why and a preference for how you do things. Even single person projects, they have governance. You know that your data must go in this location. You know you must not share your data with those people. You know in order to publish, you must get it reviewed by multiple people if it's something that's going to be critical for another folks. These are elements of governance within your single person project. The governance is there, it's just not acknowledged. And that's a pretty common problem 
problem that I see pretty often in open source projects. They just deny, oh no, we don't have governance. We couldn't possibly have governance because there's a lot of overhead that comes with governance and it's very corporate. We can't have that. No, no, no. And they think we're not going to take on the overhead of governance without stepping back to consider, well, what's the overhead of not having governance? Well, it's stopping and addressing all of these people going off in their own paths and pulling them back out of the weeds. You know, it takes effort to go out there in the weeds and beat them back and then find the person buried in the weeds and drag them back if you care enough to do so. That costs as well. So people get mad and they say, we're not going to have governance. We're not going to acknowledge that we, what we have. And then if you do acknowledge it, people stop because it's hard. Governance is, is really hard. Fundamentally, free and open source software maintainers are really good people who want to do the right thing. They really do. They just don't know how. And we don't give them the appropriate guidance. As an ecosystem, we don't do that. Governance is hard to choose, hard to decide, how to document, hard to maintain. Let's not forget the overhead of maintaining. Because again, this is human infrastructure stuff. And I don't know if you've noticed lately, but humans are kind of squishy, difficult things that are hard to get a handle on. So similarly, governance is also squishy and difficult to get a handle on. But that's okay. There are a lot of valuable, worthwhile things in this world that are hard to do. And we do them anyway. And free and open source software writ large is only one of them. So how do you get started? Um, you have a drink of water because, wow, you really get thirsty up here. Refreshing. So um, it can be very helpful to have some guardrails rather than just diving in and going, we're going to governance all the things, right? It's good to have some guardrails. Start small. Baby steps are still steps. It's okay. So where can you start? Number one, look at what you're doing already. When I say governance to people, they start thinking, okay, well, we've got, I we are going to get a technical steering committee and we're going to have members and we're going to, here's how you have the different versions of core and you know, we're going to implement all this stuff. It's like, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Big step back. What are you doing today? Let's look at that first. Let's write that down. Write the unwritten rules of your project. Make them written. While doing that, you are undoubtedly going to come up with those other ideas, those other things you want to do. Great. We have issue trackers. Use them. There is absolutely no reason why you can't put your governance stuff in issue trackers, just like every other bug or feature for a project. So go ahead and use them. Not only does it make sure you never forget about it in the future, you might just not work on it because we do that all the time with issues. They just build up. But at least you've got it documented somewhere that this is a thing we're thinking about. That's not only good for you. That's good for anyone else who shows up to the project and sees, oh, this project is considering governance. How mature? I think I want to be a part of that. So that's really, it, it instills confidence in the project in that way. Now, now, once you have looked at what you already, what already exists in your project, before you take the next steps and start bolting things on, make sure it actually works for you. Make sure everyone on, in the community is on the same page, right? Um, communicate that and verify it. Run it through the unit tests of your community. And if everyone doesn't come out with the same answer at the end, you've got a bug. Um, revise, iterate. Then you can start filling in the blanks with things that you probably should answer. Steph, did you want me to bring that back? Okay. Um, there are some fundamental questions that every free and open source software project should address in some way. Um, what is the purpose or the mission of the project. Even if you are a one-person project, you might not have thought this through. You might not really have codified, what am I trying to do here? And if you are a multiple-person project, I guarantee if you ask five of your contributors, you're going to get eight answers. 
So maybe get everyone on the same page there because that can help. That alone makes a massive difference in your project. Then figuring out who leads it, right? Who is the final word? The buck stops where? Well, if it's because you are the, main, the person who created the project to begin with, you are the final word, great, own it, write it down. Right? Say, I am the last word, but here are all the people who are going to help me, and here's how we go through that process. That's your leadership. How is that chosen? Figure that out. What is your code of conduct? Do you have one? Please say you have one. If you don't, then you're holding people to unexpressed expectations, and that is not fair. So have a code of conduct. So when somebody transgresses, you're able to go, uh, 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 look, you agreed to this. Let's figure out what went wrong so we can make sure it doesn't happen again. Because that enforcement, that figuring out what went wrong, that's pretty important as well. So you got to codify that in some way. Um, as you're working through these, don't do it alone because you are a community. And these are fundamental meaning of life type things for your free and open source software project. So don't just go away into a cabin in the woods for a summer and pound these out and come back and bestow them upon your community. Look, I have brought you the rules. That's not how this works. This is open source, we collaborate. So even if you don't necessarily agree with what's coming out, you collaborate and you meet in the middle and you negotiate. So don't do it all on your own. Um, once you've handled some of the hard meaning of life type stuff, then you can move on to other things. These specific things that your project needs will be specific to your specific project specifically. But things that are fairly common or harder people contribute. You might think you know this, but people will contribute and ask questions, which means you haven't done a good job of explaining it. Um, what is the approval process for getting something merged? How do you want people to report bugs? You know, do they just show up and give you stuff? No, create a template that will at least lead them through it, give them some instructions. Um, because again, if you don't give them those instructions, if you don't set up those expectations that how and why, they are going to create their own. And that's not their fault, it's yours. Um, how can someone join the core team? If there are teams, are there meetings? Where are the meetings held? Are there notes? Where are the notes held, right? This is the sort of stuff somebody's gonna ask, so write it down. It's governance, it's how people collaborate, it's human infrastructure. Does your project have finances? Are you getting anything from, say, Open Collective or GitHub sponsors or Tidelift or any of the other deluge of people who are trying to get money by giving money? Well, what are you doing with that? Is it going into your bank account or what? I don't know, figure it out, write it down. That's governance. Um, and very importantly, but often neglected is how does your project recognize non-code contributions? Because software might be primarily composed of code, but you've got a front end, you've got documentation, you've got project management, you've got all these other really super important things that in many cases are more important than the code itself. Pretty much any type of policy and procedure is governance. That's human infrastructure. Um, again, it's the how and the why. I interpret it very broadly. You might interpret it otherwise. That's fine. You do you. For better or worse, however, this can lead you to a great deal of things to document. I'm sorry, but docs are good. Docs scale. You don't. So write it down. Also, you should write it down because being more transparent is better than not. This is free and open source software. We are transparent. This is what we do. People show up, they read, they learn, they do, they know. Because uh, they have transparency. But it is a hell of a lot of work. I'm not going to blow sunshine up your ass here, folks. It's a lot of work. And you're going to look at this and you're going to go, holy crap. This is so hard. What do I do? There's got to be an easier way. And of course there's an easier way out there. It's always an easier way. And that's to do it the open source way, just like we always have in open source, which is to build upon the people who came before us. We can learn what others have done with their governance and we can use their examples. And sometimes these governance documents that others have 
publish because, again, transparency is wonderful. They're under licenses where we can take them and we can repurpose them and modify and release, just like open source. It's just like open source because that's what it is. It's human for infrastructure for open source. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I have been in free and open source software for way too long. Um, and so therefore, in my uh, corporate strategy world, I have had to answer the, uh, what do you do with the privacy policy? Oh, how do we handle voting? Oh my goodness. I've had to han handle these questions so many times. It just got so frustrating. I was doing the same manual web searches over and over and over again. And anytime you do that, you have to find an easier way. And mine is the FOSS governance collection at fossgovernance.org, where I have, instead of you having to do it, I have gone out and I have sought and collected hundreds of governance documents from free and open source software projects all over the place. This project increases the discoverability of FOSS governance documents from everywhere in the FOSS ecosystem, and it makes your life easier. I know that because it makes my life easier. <laughs> so therefore, it must work for everyone, right? Um, these documents are cataloged, they are archived, and they are full text searchable. And all of this is thanks to the fact that it is built upon the Zotero free software project, which usually, if you're in academia, you are, might be familiar with this, but Zotero is used for, say, citation and research management, right? You can collect all this stuff and then export it in, I don't know, AP style or something like that, right? But it also works perfectly here. Another example of open source being used for a purpose that they did not originally intend it, but it works brilliantly here. And because it's in Zotero, that means it's in a, in a Zotero group library, and you can then use it offline. So when you're on a plane and you're really just jazzed to work on some governance, you can use the Zotero laptop or desktop app and do that. Um, so, Shall we have a look? Let's see whether this works because my Wi-Fi has been a little flaky. Do, 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 do. There we go. Let's make it readable. Not that readable. Uh, well, let's make it a little bigger. So uh, this is the Zotero for... You're not seeing it on the screen. Goodness, you mean I have to do that? Gosh, technology, how does it work? Um, so, here we go. Um, I apparently have a, oh gosh, new clicker. Um, so this is the Zotero view. You can get to it by going to fossgovernance.org and clicking the take me to the collection button. Um, you can see right now there are 359 items that are cataloged in here. Uh, they are constantly growing and evolving as I get around to adding new ones and cataloging them. Um, each one of these is an, is it going to do the thing? It's not going to do the thing. That's okay. Um, there we go. Each one of these has an individual, uh, they're individually cataloged. Each one you can see over here. This is fun. Um, they have an attachment, which is a snapshot of the document at the time that it was collected. So if it changes in the future, can always have an updated version, no problem there. Each one is also meta tagged down here. Let's say you want to see, I can't read it from this angle. What is that? Can anyone see? Yes, let's do that. What happens if I click, on, can I click on that? This is fun, we're all learning together. There we go. So we've got one archives policy from Postgres, go Postgres. Postgres, by the way, has some kick-ass governance documents. Thanks, Josh. Um, so, um, so yeah, you can click and see all of them that have happened. Let's see, it's Zotero, so you click it again and it'll go away. Gosh, this is fun. Um, you also can, if you want, look at just the ones from uh, for-profit, from for-profit organizations, say from Canonical, their projects go under here. Um, nonprofits, so um, the governance documents for nonprofits, this was super useful recently when I rewrote the, um, uh, with my team, 
it was not just me. When my team and I rewrote the bylaws for the Linux Professional Institute last year, um, this was super handy, looking at bylaws for others, and then just basic projects like Postgres and the like, not that there's anything basic about Postgres. Um, also, it is completely full text searchable, which I would love to show you, but I don't have my wireless keyboard. So you can go up here and type in, say, Condorcet. How many projects are using Condorcet for their voting? Type it in. It'll come up as, uh, you know, and it'll also be meta tagged as voting if you would rather drill down in that way. So um, it's really very, very helpful, I have found in my experience. and being able to use and crib stuff, or at least compare and contrast, oh, well, this project does it this way, but that project does it that way. Let's think about how and why, and how are their constraints different from our constraints? So maybe we can kind of squish something together like those squishy people. Um, so that is what it looks like. And I will move back to my deck set. Yes, live demo, that worked. Yay, go team. Um, that is the super duper high level quick tour of the FOSS governance collection. It's publicly and openly available to everyone thanks to Zotero. Um, they are fantastic. I recommend you check out the project. Uh, as I said, the collection is always growing. Um, as I add and catalog more documents, the adding and the cataloging actually doesn't take that much time, although it does require I read through. So I've read more governance documents than you want to shake a stick at. Um, but it really doesn't take that much time. What does end up taking a lot of time is finding the darn things. <laughs> um, I have a whole bunch of issues that I can now work through because as I find them or create them, I make an issue so I can add it to the collection. And that's where you can help if you wanted to contribute to it. If you are writing your own documents, you can contribute them by writing an issue and saying, hey, add me. And eventually it will find its way into the collection. Uh, the the instructions for that are at fossgovernance.org slash contribute. You will need a gitlab.com account because that's where I have my issues it's on gitlab.com. But other than that, you know, just please fling all of the links at me and I will add them to the collection. Now, I did say I wanted to save plenty of time for us to ask and hopefully receive answers to questions. Um, so I'll put the final slide up right now. Um, I am VM Bursur. I am a corporate strategist and open source leader. I am also available for hire, full or part time, if you would like consulting or just want me to come in and add some strategy to your open source. I am also conveniently the author of these two books that you can just barely see on your screen. Uh, the first one is Forge Your Future with Open Source which is the only book available for how to contribute to free and open source software as an individual. And it is not specific to programmers. It is inclusive of all of the roles that make open source successful. The second book is nearly done. The anti-penultimate chapter is in my bag right now for editing, um, but it is available right now for uh, in beta early release. And that is business success with open source, which is how organizations and especially for-profit uh, companies can use, contribute to, and release open source software in a way that's good for their bottom line and helps move their strategic goals forward and is good for the communities and is sustainable. Um, these books, you can find them at fossbooks.com along with other books that I recommend other people read to learn more about free and open source software. Uh, these two books in particular are 30% off right now, thanks to my beautiful publisher with the code OSSNA24 through the end of the month. These slides are available right now, so you can play along at home at archive.org slash details slash OSSNA dash governance by example, one word. Um, I'm on Mastodon social.vmbrasur.com, at vmbrasur, where all good open source is found. Um, and you can email me, ossna24 at vmbrasur.com. So thank you so much to the Linux Foundation for having me yet again. I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Thanks to you all for sitting here and listening to me blather for 29 minutes and 43 seconds. Um, and now, 
Does anyone have any questions whatsoever, but not comments disguised as questions? Yes. Am I looking for any more contributions aside from here's more work for you? Um, no. Um, and part of that is because um, it's a shoemaker's children problem. I actually haven't written up good governance documents for the, the FOSS governance collection. Um, and largely because of that cataloging that I'm doing, um, I have a very standardized way for cataloging and tagging these things. And I haven't really figured out how to write it down. And my editor would rather I were writing something else right now. But excellent question. What's your name? Emily. Emily. Thank you so much, Emily. Yes, in the back. What's your name? Uh, my name is Nina. Hello, Nina. Thank you for wearing a mask. Okay, next slide, please. Um, and my question is, do you have any plans to add security uh, policy procedures to your original document? Because I have do I have any plans to add security policies and procedures to the list? Not only do I have plans, but they're already in there. I just couldn't show them because of the thingy. But yeah, there is uh, security in there. Um, there's not as many as I would prefer, but they are in there. As I come across them, so one thing you have to know as you wing links at me and say, add this to the collection, I will gladly add it to the collection, but then I will also look all around it and find the halo of other governance documents that might be related to it, but not linked. So you don't have to link every single bloody thing under the sun. I will find it. Um, and sometimes that includes security documents. But unfortunately, not as many projects have them as should. So thank you for allowing me to make that point. Please write security governance documents. OK, more questions. Yes, in the back. How do I ensure the quality of the content as far as legal and compliance? That is not my job, but it's a very good question. Um, every project itself is responsible for ensuring that they are legally compliant with whatever they need to do. Right? Um, so say your privacy policy, try and run that past a lawyer, things like that. Try and your bylaws, certainly, oh my goodness. If you are a nonprofit organization, you absolutely have to have a lawyer look at your bylaws. So if you're at the point where you are writing things and you think, huh, maybe this needs legal review, the answer is yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely get legal review. Um, whether how to find a lawyer, that's out of the scope of this project, or uh, this end of this talk. But um, if you're at the point where you are needing legal review of your governance documents, you also might be in need of a fiscal sponsor, a nonprofit under which your project can hang and receive the protection and their advice. That's a fantastic thing to have. Um, some of them in the open source world, uh, free and open source software, because specifically the ones I'm going to mention are more free. Um, we have the uh, Software Freedom Conservancy, fantastic group. Um, and they are lovely individuals. And they do fiscal sponsorship for free software projects. Uh, software in the public interest, which some of you might have heard recently, Gentoo moved under. The uh, Gentoo Foundation, they dissolved it because they figured out we just don't need it. We're going to have SPI, software in the public interest, do that sort of stuff for us. Um, Apache can qualify, but that's a different sort of thing. Linux, different. Linux Foundation, different sort of thing. You know, these are all, they all have lawyers who are going to help you if you get to that point. Um, but very good question. Thank you for that. Uh, do we have another one? Yes. What's your name, ma'am? Elizabeth. Hello, Elizabeth. I have not, but I am not looking to do analysis myself. However, 
the collection does enable that sort of thing. Um, and the, I did not actually think of the subsections of for-profit, non-profit, and project only myself. Someone who wanted to do that sort of research said, hey, it's really hard to pick out just like the projects. Can you do that? I was like, well, heck, that's a great idea. Yeah, so the question uh, for each project is, if they're listed, it, is it inclusive of every governance documents I could find? The answer is yes. Um, I do not guarantee that I found them all. <laughs> uh, because, there, yeah, there are some like Apache, wow. OpenStack, wow. These have lots and lots of government, governance documents. Um, so I might not have them all, but I've tried my darndest. And really, isn't that all we can do? Um, but. Great questions, thank you, yes. And in particular, being because it is Zotero and you can work with it offline, it opens up a lot of possibilities for research. Yes, sir, what's your name? Nigel. Nigel, oh, I had a kitty named Nigel. So the question is, um, do I have any tips for how to get community sign off on, on governance documents? Is that a good? Okay, that's accurate. Um, it's complicated because these are people, right? And you're always going to have people who don't agree on things. And it's going to require uh, negotiating and listening to their concerns and addressing their concerns and meeting in the middle and you know find every book on conflict uh, resolution you can find and inhale it and just make it part of your body. Um, find every book on negotiation you can get your hands on, the ones that aren't like pure evil capitalist, right? The, the ones that actually how to meet in the middle with people. Inhale that. Um, there is no easy way to do it aside from just to do it and to listen and be empathetic and assume ignorance before malice. Um, never assume somebody is saying no just because they're being a total jerk face. They have a reason for it more often than not. They might have a hard time expressing that, but they will have a reason why they are disagreeing to, as your example was, having a code of conduct. Right? Um, so try and understand that as much as possible. Um, but you don't have to necessarily have 100% sign off. Right? It's okay within a community to agree as a community to, well, okay, majority or two-thirds or whatever. You know, as if you go through the governance collection and you look at the bylaws, they specifically have, here's this type of stuff that needs two-thirds, here's this type of stuff that needs one-half. Right? Those are usually bylaws that are for larger organizations like nonprofits. But the idea still applies to smaller projects as well. So you don't necessarily have to lift the legal language, but you can't lift the idea on which there is no copyright. <laughs> so you can do that. All right, excellent question. Thank you, Nigel. Do we have other? Otherwise, we are going to end a minute and five seconds early. So we have a minute and five seconds if you have a question. Awesome. Excellent. Oh, Chad, you ne'er do well. Yes, Chad. How may I help you, sir? This is uh, maybe a little more uh, of detail. Does Zotero do tags? Did you have to enter all those in, or is that automated somehow? I entered all those in, and that's part of the reason why it takes a long time. Well, it doesn't take a long time to do it, but I can't really have anyone else do it yet because I haven't written down, here are the heuristics and criteria for this. Right. Um, some of them, like I will say, that I'm going to tag this document as voting, even though it doesn't necessarily say voting, but it does say here is how we will choose via consensus sort of thing. It's like, okay, well, that's voting enough 
for. And so I haven't written down those heuristics. That's the shoemaker's children problem that I mentioned earlier. Okay, thank you. Well, now we are, you get five seconds back. So thank you everyone for being here. I really appreciate it. <laughs>